What's up guys, Sub Derek here for my first post B patch VOD review. If you guys didn't see a B patch dropped yesterday that absolutely changed the meta. It hit all of the really, really overperforming stuff. Nar was hit, Kais was hit, Zaya was hit, Teemo was actually hit, Orn was hit, and I think I'm forgetting like one thing, but that, that's the majority of it. Uh, they, they even hit Fortune, which thank you, bless, bless Mort Dog and everybody out there who's working on TFT right now. Uh, like they actually knocked it out of the park with this B patch. Um, the only thing to say is that they didn't rebuff any of the reroll lines. So reroll has still been taken out back and just, yeah, do not try to play reroll under almost any circumstance. There's still a few lines that exist. The NAR line is still fine, not like giga broken like it was, but still a very, very strong line. Uh, the stats indicate that the like Senna uh, type line is still fine. I haven't got a chance to play it on the B patch yet, but the stats say that it's fine. So that might be something to explore as well. So um and and uh Aphelios, faded reroll Aphelios plus thresh is like the other really good reroll comp right now um so a few reroll comps that exist not a ton uh the majority of reroll comps just completely out of the meta and that means that we are in a fast eight meta there are a lot of people just pushing eight on four two if you can't do it four two maybe four five uh and looking for four cost reroll comps to play around um and that, I mean, it's good or bad, depending on what kind of a player you are. You know, I had my last video and I, ha I heard some people who were like, they're taking three costs out of the meta. I'm literally going to quit. Like, I'm not going to play anymore. This set because three costs aren't in the meta anymore. And then other people were like, like, please just get rid of these three costs. So, you know, I know some people enjoy playing the game one way. Some people enjoy playing the game the other way. Um, and I mean, you know, you can't perfectly cater to everyone. That's just life. Um, that being said, today we're watching a VOD from rest event because I wanted to watch a specific four cost line that he plays this game and it actually seems kind of crazy that we even end up in that line uh, because we started with a titan slam you might think that this is like a gnar game you might think that this is a cane game but if you looked at the thumbnail of the video uh, you probably know that this is an ash game uh, which is really really interesting so it's gonna be wild to see how we end up actually getting there I love the eternal winter pickup just a fantastic horn item in general and we get fortune in here like I said fortune nerfed but of course not not gone completely still perfectly playable and uh and Prest event uh you know among all of the other really really good ielo players knows how to play around fortune sees an early fortune and says i mean yeah i'm super down to play this because they nerfed fortune stage three a bit but obviously it is still uh it is still perfectly fine you can absolutely play fortune if you get a good spot for it uh and hey this looks like a good enough spot actually interesting because i would have assumed that we're making 30 here i mean he, he kind of looks like he is just gonna make 30 and uh he's just gonna sell this but he wanted i don't know and out the pool for some reason doesn't make much of a difference um but i'm really really curious to see how uh press event ends up playing around ash this game because it's it's in my opinion actually after the patch one of the highest cap boards in the game it takes a little bit to get there it's one of those boards that really caps hard on like level nine uh and kind of stuff and yeah he's actually not gonna make gold here he is gonna pre-level here hold on to the tristana pair and maybe play a stronger board kind of sad that we end up fighting pocky there and losing our win streak feels really really bad actually uh, and we're just gonna pick up a chain vest here, which is interesting to pick up. I mean, it's three cost. It if we knew we were playing towards Ash, isn't a Mumu, but I don't think uh, in uh, Precedent's mind right now he thinks that he's playing towards Ash. I think he's playing towards uh, a Heavenly game. He wants to go for like Edge of Night here. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what this game ends up being. You know, don't wanna don't wanna spoiler too hard. And well, okay, the spoilers are fake. But we also end up actually taking out. Uh, our, our fortune here because we won the last fight so we can't actually stack a fortune we're gonna win this next fight against a full open player so uh yeah a lot of people playing very very weak boards right now which means we might potentially get a three streak for a free here we got a encounter coming up so let's see what that is before we make any judgments now lets you reroll the next augment offering one additional time okay i mean doesn't change the game too too much but means that you're probably not gonna get more dogged on augments might mean that you can find something perfect for your board um, I like these Yorks when I'm playing around this type of board. Uh, yeah, and he's gonna start pivoting into the York a little bit. Um, just getting some of the... Yeah, he, he cut the Kindred. Now he's playing towards the York, which means sadly we lose Dryad actually on this board. But in any case, um, it, it looks like we're playing a Heavenly game, but well, you, you guys will see once we get to 3-2 actually, uh, the reason why this is not a Heavenly game. Uh, because Heavenly... Heavenly is a fantastic comp, and like if you can play for it, I mean it's it's one of the the most consistent comps. But actually, it's interesting. It doesn't cap as high, crazy enough as the Ash board. Um, and I know some people, you know, might have played against Heavenly board and said like, what are you talking about? This this board just caps out so high and just wins every fight. But 
The, the Ashboard actually is a really, really strong counter to Heavenly because of the fact that you're playing around Lissandra, right? Lissandra just completely farms Kayan, even if he has like an Edge of Night, just proc that Edge of Night early and then pot the Kayan. It's, uh, it's just... It's actually disgusting what this Ash board does to uh, a Kane board. Um, and the other hard thing about the, the matchup for Kane is that a Mumu, just putting a Mumu 2 on your front line, that unit will actually tank for a million years if he has good items. Um, so even if there's just a Kane staring him in the face, you still like don't have to worry too, too much. Uh, the Gargoyle Slam is going to come out here, which is just the best possible slam in this spot. It's not really you know great for the comp that we're thinking of playing, which is Heavenly here, but... It is great for uh, Eternal Winter. And yeah, here is the pivot that makes it all possible. Salvage bin in this position that says, okay, you know what? We can flex any comp that we want from this position. We have a bow, a sword, uh, and then a bunch of defensive items essentially. But if we take salvage bin here, we can just flex whatever. It also makes a lot more sense from this spot to play around salvage bin. Um, because we have this Eternal Winter, it's actually pretty hard to get good value out of that when you're playing around Heavenly. You don't really have a super tank unless you play like the Orin version. Um, whereas if we end up playing into Ash, uh, that is, you know, a, a lot easier to make use of. We can put these items on a Nautilus, we can put these items on a Mumu, depending on who we two star first. So it, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Also, we scout this player, see that they're already, uh, playing a cane on their board because they've hit a cane early. The the cane lottery is in full effect this patch. If somebody gets early canes, uh, it, you know, all but ensures that they'll be able to coast to a top four. Um, and then, you know, the question is, can they cap out from there? Because I do, I do believe that you can out cap cane boards pretty easily. I, I would call this, this board that we're going to end up playing maybe the cane killer board just because of how good the matchup is. But, you know, that, that all, once we get there, still we're just getting through this early game, trying to play our strongest board. Press event, or, uh, yeah, yeah, press event swapping in and out a, a ton of uh, units, actually, just every single round, trying to figure out what he's doing here, um, unit-wise. Uh, the other thing that I would like to say here is that we, we do have to start pre-planning our items. So we got this Gunblade dropped. That could actually just be a Gunblade for Ash. I don't know at what point um, he decides to actually play Ash, and I mean... From this shop, you almost could just say that we're going to play a cane game. So I, I'm really interested to see how this game evolves here. Because yeah, we can throw these items here and then just make some cane items here. There's there's a lot. I actually want to pause here and look at uh, potential items and see what he ends up making here. Edge of Night is a higher prio item. I, I see Edge of Night like Gunblade Titans. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the stats actually really, really like Titans, which is not something that I would expect because they, they nerfed it. But I guess, you know, cane and AD unit. Um, so we'll see. You could also not make an item here. He's going to go Bramble Vest Gunblade. Last Whisper. Wow. I mean, in his opinion, these are the strongest items you can make right now, right? Because he doesn't necessarily have to play this comp late game. I'm surprised. I know I've, I've heard some, some, uh, like, some hype around Last Whisper. The stats that I look at still say that Titan is a better item than Last Whisper, just barely. Um, but it does guarantee that you get the, uh, the Shred. Uh, and Bramble Vest also, in my mind, is not an amazing item, um, but maybe, maybe, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a pretty, I mean, there, this is a relatively AD heavy patch, so I, I could see it. I mean, he made it for sure. That's surprising. That, this is why I wanted to pause and look at itemization though, just because like these, these types of decisions can really swing the game. Um, this is, this is not a game that's necessarily going to be swung that much by itemization just because we can, we can change our items whenever we want to. And we already pick up this Ornn, which is fantastic. And yeah, he actually gets out of the cane immediately, has the Ornn here. And yeah, he, he really just wanted to make those items, but he's just going fast eight here. Oh my God. And just rolling it down here to try to pick up like an Ash, I guess. This is a wild, uh, the the three, seven, not even the four, one. He doesn't even care about making Econ. He just wants to roll down sooner than everyone else. Picks up an Ash here. Does not want to pick up the Lux too because he thinks it's not valuable enough. And boom, there's the Ash too. That makes the pivot all worth it. I assume we're going to make a Lux too at this point. No, he still doesn't make Lux too. Um, and he just throws the Amumu in here. We're still playing around this Galio frontline, which eventually we're going to get out of. And now we can look at potentially making Ash items. So once again, we can try to figure out what he actually wants to make on this Ash here. I like something. Uh, I, I've heard a lot of hype actually around just Last Whisper, like not going into an Ash, like Last Whisper Gumblade DB here. Um, very, very curious to see what his itemization. He he is still a he is still a Gwinsu believer. I mean, I think Gwinsu the stats look fantastic on Ash, so he goes Last Whisper DB and then Gwinsu instead of potentially a um a Gunblade. 
Um, I think this makes sense. Gunblade's probably going to be a little bit too low damage if you don't... I, okay. I'm pretty sure I'm getting baited by people who say that Gwinsu is not good on Ash. I'm pretty sure this is like your best item. Uh, a bunch of fantastic augments here. This is a comp where you're playing a little bit more into the vertical, so I don't believe in stand. Oh, wait. Let's actually look back and uh, and look at our uh, Exalted there. No. I mean, yeah, there's no way we're playing this. He is going to pick up stand, though. Yeah, doesn't uh, doesn't want inspiring anything like that. Doesn't want more frontline. Just wants the AD and AP. We're going to see how many traits we can actually get in this game. Because, uh, cause, yeah, most versions I see... Oh, that is a that is a two-star Silas. Nothing wrong with that. And he is actually going to fit Exalted here. I mean, it fits for now. So wh what are his Exalted units on this current board here? It's uh, it, it, was, it was the Galio plus the Kiana plus this uh this Apelio. So yeah, it, I mean it you you basically just have to play one sort of dead unit, but he ends up even getting Wukong in and making this fit. I mean, this is a crazy board. And now we can start looking at Silas items here. BT is completely fine. Um Vow would be the next slam in this position if you wanted to make something. I like Val Silas a lot. Um just because, you know, you want to get him casting, but we'll see if he ends up making it there and the extra player health not bad either. Uh only downside about this uh, spot is that we're stuck on the Galio one, but I mean, this board should be good enough, especially with the Exalted, to start pushing levels, looking at potentially going nine. And I mean, we get six synergies in here for Stan United. I mean, it's a really cool angle to see being able to play around this uh, this Exalted setup. It's a it's a very, very flexible way of playing. Like, he already had the Galio, and he said, you know what? Okay, I can throw in a Diana on my board. I'm always one to play Aphelios anyway, and yeah, this works. He's still, he's looking at the edge of Knight Silas. Okay. I mean, Silas is... AD, uh, like carry front, frontline carry type unit. So, Edge of Night theoretically makes sense on him. It's a little scary because he's like Bruiser, so he's like he's like pseudo tank, um, but not really. Also, my God, we just get Alessandra for free off Carousel here with a rod. Nothing wrong with that. We still didn't hold the Ash, so we can't pivot out back into like a four porcelain setup. Um, but I mean, Alessandra is very good. Yeah, we have to find a way to get her in. Oh, wait. Did we just pick up Ash and Chopper? Yeah, we did. Oh, or, or, I mean Lux. I don't know why I said Ash. Um, yeah, we did just pick up Lux and Chop. Like, I was like, I, I definitely did not see that Lux on bench. And so, yeah, now he can actually make this pivot. He ends up getting out of Nautilus, which feels a little bit bad. Uh, and yeah, then the question is, like, you cut, like, Exalted or something? You could cut Exalted. Um, but, I mean, Exalted is so much... It's so much, like, Econ, essentially. And it's also just combat strength. Uh, I wonder if we're going to end up playing Exalted this entire game or if we're going to pivot out later. But this board looks fantastic. Now we got the four porcelain in. Um, yeah, I, I am not against selling like... He actually ups to... Oh my god, he ups to hold the Wukong and we're getting Wukong pair here. Um, yeah, we're, we're not going to look at Nautilus on this board anymore. Because our next level, I guess, is just going to be Wukong. I, I'm getting dizzy watching this game. But it shows how this patch can be played, right? This, I mean, compare this to last patch where, you know, you picked a reroll comp. You rolled down for your level 7 board and you hoped that you hit. I mean, look at what Preston is doing this game. He is flexing around the units he hit. He hits a random Silas that's going on the board with the Galio. He's playing around the Exalted because he has the Galio. He's holding this random Wukong pair that he found that kind of fits on the board with the Ki with the, uh, with the Kiana. Like, I mean, what a crazy game. I mean, this patch is going to be really, really fun to watch. It's also, like, I... I just hope I can get myself prepped up for the tourney tomorrow because there's so many lines. Like, I mean, this is... This is not a board I've ever played. I mean, I don't know if it's a board that Precedent's ever played, actually, just because it is, it is very, uh, it's very, very flex here. Uh, I mean, I guess we're just looking for list item here, TG. Yeah, TG. He he makes the TG first just to. Oh right, wait. Why are we doing this? It's. Yeah, it, it doesn't because every time you make and and reforge the TG, it actually turns into a different item. But that doesn't really matter, because every time you sell it, you're going to be putting it on a different unit. So, yeah, there, there's no, like, there's no way to, like, make the exact TG that you want. But, I mean, that's that's pretty funny. Uh, but, yeah, TG onto list looks good here, just because she's... You, you'd rather TG than just, like, one mediocre item. And, yeah, we get to level for the Wukong here. We could maybe... You know, we're probably not moving the TG over to him at any point, but maybe. Probably not, honestly. If anything... I mean, uh, I mean, we're Silas too. Eventually, those Silas items could end up on Wukong, but that's also really, really far off. The hope is that maybe Lissandra can farm a tier. We can make like blue buff. We can move these items that are on Silas plus potentially blue buff to Wukong. We will, uh, we'll see as the game goes on. But this is a really, really cool board. I, I just, I'm, I'm blown away by how cool this board is. And uh, I mean, it looks like we're coasting to a very, very solid performance. That is one thing about Ash is that one. 
She caps out very high because you get to play Lissandra on your board who absolutely farms the melee matchups and even the tank matchups. This Lissandra unit is just insane. Uh, and she gives you the ability to cap out higher because you get extra items. Um, and the other thing is that Exalted can often fit very, very easily. There are a lot of Exalteds that have a random sniper like a Felios in or, you know, a random Warden like a Mumu or, or, um, or Nautilus or something. So this is one of the boards that I feel like is the most playable with Exalted. There are very many Exalted uh, variations that work with this setup. He's looking at, at Wukong too, but sadly we cannot pick that up here. We have a Rod open here, but that doesn't really do that much for us. We can take a Spat here. Um, and where are we going to get the bow from? Because, I mean, you can make Porcelain Spat. Maybe we're looking at another Spat here. I mean, Galio 2 is fantastic. Um, I mean, we still have this Reforger as well. I guess I mean, he's he's going for it. Okay, we still we do not hit porcelain spat. We can make a Morello though, which is pretty nice because we don't actually have heal cut on this board. And he's just going to play full greed mode and hope that eventually we can farm a bow from somewhere and make porcelain spat, or we can just get a uh, a bow item off of the dragon here and then go for porcelain spat from that. Um, the question I guess becomes, who are you even porcelain spatting on this board? I guess you could put it on Wu Kong. Um, very often you just put it on like your set or like your uh your Syndra. Usually you're playing like the uh the faded version of this comp where you easily get three faded in with set Syndra and we're already playing the Ophelios, but not playing that version, so we can't put it on Syndra. You could put I mean, Wukong is is a caster, right? He is 30 mana, he casts a lot, so I could see just throwing the porcelain spat onto Wukong here. He's he's gonna have so much uptime on it. And yeah, ooh, the random spat slam here onto Lux. I'm not really sure what that does, I'll be honest. I mean, it allows you to Pop porcelain spat. I mean, oh, it's it's bulk. It's silver bulk. Uh, like honestly, we're so far into this game, I forgot about silver bulk as well. Uh, we have redemption as a possible slam here. It's a pretty solid item. It also could be like I was talking about. Like I guess best case here, we get like static shiv from one of these. Oh my god. I mean, there it is, right? Yeah, that's porcelain spat and it's blue buff. That's disgusting. Um, so yeah, we get to make porcelain spat. We get to make blue buff, and then last Wukong item here. Is maybe even gonna move. To Ooh, porcelain spat, Nautilus. Okay, and then okay, so we're not even gonna itemize this this Wukong here. Yeah, just porcelain spat, Nautilus, Redemption, and okay. So I guess he took Static Shiv, but uh, but not for the the reason that I wanted. Okay, well, I mean, I could see it. I, I'm surprised actually that we don't just go for the. But I don't know. I, I can look at the, the stats later and see what the the stats on porcelain spat Wukong look like. Maybe it's just not good enough. Um. But I would, I would assume the attack speed in DR looks amazing on him. But uh, I don't know. I mean, this certainly makes sense. Honestly, I'm, I'm too interested. I'm, I'm gonna look up Porcelain Emblem right now and see what the stats are on, uh, on Wukong items, uh, Delta. I mean, it says Wukong is like the best holder of it in the game, second to Soraka. Um, but yeah, I, I think maybe I, I kind of think my line was better there. But well, what, what will you say? You know, th this is a, a very uh, wild game, so many options. So I'm not surprised that, you know, this is something that either press event is just not interested in or he, he missed. I, I'm not going to say that he missed it. I'm going to say that he thinks this line is better. Maybe he says, I just need extra frontline here because Ash is just going to kill everybody. Uh, and I also need more frontline for the Silas, but I don't know. Well, he's also, you know, the Wukong 2 is not guaranteed. Uh, obviously the Nautilus 2 is a lot better than a Wukong 2 or better than a Wukong 1 because yeah, who, who's guaranteeing that we get to Wukong? Also, we would have no, like, Edge of Night on the Wukong, so it is very possible that he would just end up dying. Um, speaking of dying, we are down to 16 HP. Looks like it's gonna be a top four, but we need to push level here. That's a QSS on a Wukong, too. I, I would be... We're not gonna pick that up. We're gonna go for the on, Or we, we can go for six porcelain here. We just need to find... We need to get a bow from somewhere, but where's that bow coming from? What a what a greedy play, honestly, to go for this. Because there's no bow, right? I mean the only bow the only bows that exist are on Ash, and we can't sell Ash. I mean, this game is great. Yeah, he actually just took the mythic emblem to greed. He's at 16 HP. And he took it to greed. Like, uh, okay, what a beast. What a beast. I mean, obviously, six porcelain is an insane cap. Don't farm it here, though we do get the ability to make like an adaptive helm here. Uh get another belt. So still no bow yet. Um, the other thing about playing six porcelain is we would have to pick up an ash uh, to be able to play it. Oh, you can just make heavenly emblem, yeah. Okay, so we just go for the heavenly emblem. I guess I mean that's pretty smart that we can go for heavenly emblem, we can go for porcelain emblem. Honestly, heavenly emblem is like maybe not better here, but like almost as good here as porcelain, just because 
it gets us another uh, level of heavenly. It's omnivamp to our entire team, and it just it lets us make something, right? Um, though I mean, also I think getting Wukong to it allowed us to make something. But I think Resident was so confident that he was gonna hit Wukong to with the amount of gold that he had that he you know just decided to take this. Man, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this has just been a crazy. Preston has blown my mind with this bot. I feel like he's done so many things that I. Oh my god! And now he's just pulling up his AVP. I mean, <laughs> he's he's just done so many things that I did not expect. But I mean, it's turned out amazingly well. And you can see now the cap of this comp picks up a bow here. Now he just needs to get in that last porcelain, and he does get it in with the Lux. So now we have six porcelain. We have to put porcelain on to the Wukong here. Decides to make the BT over the edge of night. Um, and now, I mean, we should just be guaranteed to win this game. Six Porcelain is insane. Your units get so much DR, so much attack speed, and yeah, look at it. None of them are dying, and it's going to be the dub for Prestament. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, yeah, there was... Uh, this was a wild bod. I mean, this was a, a fantastically fun game to watch, and uh, I don't know. There's so many decisions, so I'm... Kudos, kudos to Riot Games. I feel like, you know, this patch is way better than the last patch. I think this is a fantastic patch to play the tournament on. The only, my only criticism is you guys made the game too hard. Like, there are too many options to play here. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, and yeah, I will see you guys uh, in the next one. I am playing in tourney tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll try to record a video so I'll have one to go so that I get one out for tomorrow. But I'll be playing tomorrow, tomorrow morning, North American time. Uh, I think the game started at noon Pacific, something like that. Either 10 a.m. or noon Pacific, something like that. Okay, bye.